What did you see? Dos personas en mi sala. Two people in my living room. Those two people in your living room, how were they dressed? Con suéteres y tapados de la cara. With sweaters and their faces covered. El más grande te mira que tenía un arma y el el otro tenía una navaja. The bigger one, I could see that he had a gun, and the smaller one, I could see that he had a knife. Yes. No hiciera nada tonto y todo iba a estar bien. That I shouldn't do anything stupid, and everything was going to be okay. So the, the smaller one is the one with the knife, is that right? Sí. Yes. And then did you drive? Sí. Yes. When you drove, did they tell you where to go? Solo me dijeron que manejara derecho. They just told me to drive straight. Did they make any comments uh, while you were driving? Sí, uno le dijo, uno le dijo al otro, Algo sobre alguien corriendo. Yes, one of them told the other one. One of them said to the other one something about someone running. When you see Ms. Tibbetts, is she driving or is she running towards town or away from town? Hacia el pueblo. Towards the town. So you meet her head on with your vehicle, is that right? Correct. Correct. Does she make any statements or, or anything like that? No. No. She, she doesn't wave or anything like that? No. No. One of them got out of the car. Which one? El de la parte de enfrente. Uh, the one that was on the front. So the guy with the knife. Correct. Correct. What did he do? El solo empezó a Ir en la, hacia, el, hacia enfrente, hacia la dirección del pueblo. Well, he just started uh, going towards, uh, forward, towards the town direction. How long was he gone? Alrededor de 10, 12 minutos. Around uh, 10 uh, to 12 minutes. Well, first, the person that was in front got out of the car, and then the person who was behind. What happened next? I've heard them opening the trunk. What happened next? Solamente sentí un movimiento en el carro y se volvió a cerrar la cajuela. I just heard a movement in the car and then that the trunk closed. They told me just to wait a few minutes and to leave. What happened next? I got out of the car because I didn't have my keys. Well, obviously, I knew there was something in the trunk. And why did you think there was something, or why did you know there was something in the trunk? Because previously, I had felt when they had placed something or put something in the trunk. Did you look in the trunk? Sí. Yes. What did you see? Un cuerpo. A body. Was that the body of Molly Tibbetts? Sí. Yes. What did you do next, sir? Solo como pude bajar el carro y decidí ponerla en el maíz. I just, uh, I, the way I could, I picked her up, and then I put her in the cornfield. Did you cover her with corn? Sí. Yes. OK, I, I listened to this thing, and, and I still don't have a 100% clear picture of what exactly happened here. I mean, it, it, it's he's telling the story. He was there, but what really happened? Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter. Maybe. She can fill in the blanks. I was trying to listen. You know, you've got the interpreter, everything going on here. Um, from my perspective, the story seemed a little vague, and there were, like, some jumps in, in the whole thing. We go from here to there to there, and, wow, it's all over. Um, how much detail do we have about Molly Tibbetts and how she was killed? Not a lot of details. 
Vinny, uh, from his testimony, and uh, we didn't gain really any more on Cross. We thought maybe we could get some specifics or out of uh, out of him, but no. So we just heard the story about two masked men in sweaters and knit ski mask with a gun, one with a gun, one with a knife that basically show up randomly at this defendant's home after he gets out of the shower, abduct him, make him drive them around where the one with the knife gets out. I get, we presume we don't have details that something is done to Molly Tibbetts and he feels as though they're putting something in the trunk. And then he, these two men ask him to drive further away. He ends up in the cornfield and then they just abandon him there. And he doesn't have his keys or his cell phone. So he looks in the trunk for his keys or his cell phone. That's when he discovers the body. And then he goes and places Molly Tibbetts' body in the cornfield. And his keys and, and the cell phone were in the trunk. Of course, the killers left that behind just in case he wanted to call police on, you know. Well, unbelievable. But so we don't, so he doesn't see Molly Tibbetts get murdered, according to his story. He doesn't see her brought back to the car. He doesn't see her lifted into the trunk. He doesn't hear them talking about it. He, none of this. It's just um, they, they park the car. One of them leaves for, do we know how long? Was it 10 minutes? And then, then the trunk opens. He doesn't, doesn't say which direction he went, which direction he came back. How long? Was he by himself? Was he carrying someone? Did he hear a woman's voice? None of that. None of that, Vinny. Yeah, he, he, the guy with the knife, though, leaves first gone for about 10 to 12 minutes and then I believe he does say that he gets comes back in the second one I think maybe they move maybe 300 feet or so and they both get out and then that's when they return and he feels like something's being put in the trunk Wow okay so I want to play another piece of this testimony because it gets a little more specific and and we know that the defense um, questioned Molly Tibbetts boyfriend on cross-examination, then called him to the stand during their case, and, and now we know why. Let's take a listen. One of them got out of the car. Which one? El de la parte de enfrente. Uh, the one that was on the front. So the guy with the knife. Correct. Correct. What did he do? El solo empezó a ir en la, hacia, el, hacia enfrente, hacia la dirección del pueblo. Well, he just started uh, going towards, uh, forward, towards the town direction. How long was he gone? Alrededor de 10, 12 minutos. Around uh, 10 uh, to 12 minutes. The guy in the back, was he doing anything? No, solamente estaba callada en la parte de atrás. No, he was only quiet in the back part. Did he seem nervous? Cuando empezó a pasar el tiempo, él empezó a ponerse nervioso, a murmurar en la parte de atrás. Uh, well, when the time started going by, he started uh, kind of whispering in the back. Did you hear him say anything? Pues se escuchaban muchas cosas, pero lo único que pude entender, lo único que se pudo escuchar fue que él dijo, come on, ya. Yeah. Uh, well, um, you could hear a lot of things, uh, but uh, I guess what I heard him saying is, uh, come on, Jack. Now, sir, you've heard Mr. Fries and I at least insinuate that Dalton Jack could have been involved in this. You've, you've heard the, the trial, correct? Yes. Are you telling this jury that Dalton Jack was one of those people? No. No. Do you know who either of the people were that were in that car with you? No. No? Is this like passive aggressive testimony? I'm trying to figure it out. Well, I'm not, I'm not you know, pointing the finger at anybody, but they said, come on, Jack, and then we've cross-examined this guy and called him back to the stand. Um, do we know if anyone calls Dalton Jack Jack? I mean, because Jack is a normal first name, right? Like, most people... You know, Jack Dalton would be more normal than, uh, more, uh, yeah, I guess more normal, more common than Dalton Jack. But his first name is Dalton. It's not Jack. 
Right, yeah, this, it's kind of random, uh, but uh, they're wanting to insinuate. She's correct. We're trying to insinuate that he is sus a suspect here. They want the jury to put the pieces together. They've put him on the stand in their own case in chief, trying to poke holes in his credibility about the other women, cheating on Molly Tibbetts, his anger issues, his memory issues, any of those motives, which may maybe they'll piece together in their closing argument tomorrow, Benny. But now we know because there are two masked men involved in this story, now it makes sense as to why on cross-examination of most all the state witnesses, the defense has been naming all the other names of suspects on cross-examination about the police looking into this guy, this guy, this guy. I've, I've, I think I've counted maybe about 10 other names because they were masked. He doesn't know for sure who these people are. And uh, even though they're insinuating, he's saying, I'm not saying Dalton Jack did it, but I did hear, come on, Jack in this but we have no other characteristics was this in an accent did this person show any part of themselves were they fully covered uh, any other characteristics that you would remember and at the same time behina rivera is testifying like you said he is very unemotional matter of fact this was sounded like a traumatic situation to be in and he doesn't seem to be really affected by what happened to him allegedly and, and what's also interesting, what exactly is his language situation? I know he sits in the courtroom with the headphones on with the translators, right? But um, he needs a translator in court, but when he gets abducted, he understands what his abductors are saying in, in English, right? Because didn't he testify about some things that he heard them say? He did. He, t he was asked that very question. He said that he was able to understand enough to follow their commands at gun and knife point what they wanted him to do. Now, there's another name, um, Ulysses, Ulysses. Uh, let's take a listen to a little bit of testimony about his ex-girlfriend's cousin. Do you know Ulysses Felix? Say. Yes. How do you know Ulysses Felix? Yes, it's primo de mi, de mi ex-novia. It is my ex-girlfriend's cousin. So it would be Iris's cousin, is that right? Sí. Yes. Has he been to your home before? Sí. Yes. Has he spent the night before? Sí. Yes. Now you're not alleging that Ulysses was in that car, is that right? Correct. Correct. But Ulysses uh, did spend time with your, uh, I guess, Hispanic group of people. Is that right? Sí. Yes. He would attend various functions. Is that right? Sí. Yes. Did you know his parents? Sí. Yes. How did you know them? We worked at the same place. Now, Ulysses also attended uh, Brooklyn uh, School, is that right? Yes. And unlike you, did he seem to have a fair amount of white friends? Yes. All right, I'm trying to piece together what they're doing here. All right, so Ulysses is familiar with his house and his family, so... Uh, when those threats were made about, uh, I know, uh, you know, Iris and your daughter and all that, Ulysses would know that. Um, so Ulysses has white friends, and Dalton Jack is white. So Dalton Jack, the racist, and his uh, Hispanic friend uh, got together to abduct Rivera because... Dalton wanted to kill Molly because he was sleeping with another woman. Did I yes. solve it? I think you, I think you put the pieces together. I'm I'm right there with you, because Ulysses Felix knew where Rivera lived. That's one of the items on cross examination the prosecutor brought up because Bahena Rivera lived in the middle of nowhere, Vinny, on Yerby Farms. 
It, what a random location for two masked men to enter randomly on an afternoon and abduct him, have him drive his car around. Well, Ulysses Felix knew where he lived. He'd been in the home. He knew what kind of car he drove and and maybe that he would be an easy one to abduct and do these things with. Wouldn't tell anyone. Maybe he knew his fears about the authorities. He was here illegally and he had a daughter they could hold against him. So it, I think you're heading in the what we may be hearing tomorrow in closing arguments. All right, but what has changed? Why can he tell the story now without fear, yet he couldn't tell police back then? I mean, now he's he's naming names. Ulysses knows where he lives yeah. uh, and, and knows where Iris lives. D d does he think his daughter is safe tonight? Did that come up at all today? I wish the prosecutor asked that very question on cross-examination today. I would love to know his answer and reasoning now that he's no, no longer apparently fearful uh, in fear for his daughter's life and his daughter's mother's life. Yeah, because he's not just saying mass men. Point, I mean, he's, he's saying actual names now. I mean, actual names. And, and if Dalton had right, been there, go ahead. No, I said, and just insinuating, right? This is, these are the conclusions they want to draw. But another fact about Ulysses Felix is that the family of Molly Tibbetts, he was friends with Molly's brother, younger brother at the time, and Felix actually stayed at the Tibbetts' home after her murder. And when Felix's parents, you know, left at the workplace after this all happened, and yeah, it, it, that's the story that Molly Tibbetts' mother took him in, and he stayed there for quite a while. Wow. What a day. Uh, it, it completely unexpected, but has added another element to this whole thing. And, and again, jurors may believe that this story is reasonable. Just need one, you get a hung jury. You get 12, you walk home. So um, we shall find out. Um, Chandler, you've got to stay with us. You, you, you can't go anywhere because up next, folks, it was the uh, first day 